All right, so uh, we'll start in about five minutes, uh, just in case uh, more of your friends join in. Uh, during the meantime, do you have any questions uh, related to the assignments? I know I, I got a few emails uh, overnight and yesterday. I haven't had time to 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 go through the questions. I will do it as soon as today is done. I still need to clear up uh, quite a lot of meetings today, but I'll, I'll reply to you as soon as possible. Uh, basically, I'm aware of the emails. I'll, I'll try to reply as soon as possible. Uh, If you have any question that you want to ask now, uh, you can do it as well. Uh, today we'll kind of go through the remaining of uh, uh, C, and we will do a, a quick recap of today's lecture on Monday as well, just for your friends who cannot attend this class. Uh, this video, as I said, will be posted online, but, but I, I want to make sure that that's a live session that allows everyone to answer, I mean, it's a, for, for me to answer all of your questions. Uh, today is probably one of the lecture that might confuse people the most about C as a language. And, and I'm trying to go through examples as much as possible. I'll just actively draw the example uh, on the slides. Uh, please bear with me. And if you have any question, please do let me know because it, it can get confusing with with uh, the the concept of pointer and memory references, uh, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'll try to go through this as slow as possible. I'll try to make sure that everyone catch up. Don't feel embarrassed or anything to and, uh, to ask a question. All right. Uh, my 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 deep request is like today, if you have question. It because the assignment, the second assignment, and the quiz, uh, I mean, the, the midterm would be something related to the content of today's lecture. It, it, it would go to, uh, we'll go to the, the important concept in C. And assignment will be more about the uh, writing code in C. So it should not be uh, ramping art, uh, ramping things up too hard yet. But but uh, in the meantime, if you look through assignment one or you have any questions, uh, feel free to to contact me. I will reply as soon as I am available. And uh, actually, one more thing. There's no in-class exercise for today. Uh, we will do the in-class exercise that combine uh, yesterday, I mean, not yesterday, the lecture on Monday and today's lecture, as well as the one on next Monday together in one single in-class exercise. So I hope that gives you a little bit more of a context and practice on how to write C code. All right, it seems like there's no uh, questions for now. So let's begin today's lecture. Uh, on Monday, we left with how to write a basic code and see how to declare variables, how to declare an integer, a character, uh, how to use them, how to actually do add, multiply, if else loop, right? So uh, one thing that, that uh, every single programmer has to use, right, is an array. Uh, anyone here have not heard about what array is? Because I, I don't mind going through what does it mean to, 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 for something to be in an array. If you've heard about it, I hope you, you do to some extent in, in Python, uh, you can use this bracket to specify that this data type is an array. What do I mean by that? Let's say if I do int i i bracket ten, what it will create is this series of integer. There'll be ten of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is this is i. I has ten items. This is i of zero. This is i of one. This is I of two. 
this is i of nine each one of these data are integer it is an integer basically you would just declare that that is a collection of integer starting from the first integer which is indexed by zero go then go through each index there is zero one two three four five uh until i of nine so you would use this bracket that's not a curly bracket there the, the, i don't know what's called uh but this this is sign to denote that this is an array <clears throat> you can do the same thing for character basically you can do the same thing for any single data type in c any single data type in c can be declared as an array this is a, that'll be a collection of that so my question in an integer, it's kind of clear. I'm going to make 10 items. I will use any of these items, right? In a character, if I want to represent a string, right? Let's say I want to represent a string called hello, right? Because C doesn't have an object, a string is essentially an array of character. So these arrays basically consist of the character H, right? The character E. The character L, the character L again, right? And then the character O. How can I tell that that's the end of my character? Because I just declare that A has 20, the length, it can contain 20 character long. So in C, anyone want to guess how can I tell that, hey, that's the end of my string? That's it. Hello, nothing else. uh assign pointer so error itself is a pointer that's a great answer but it, it actually doesn't really address the problem in the sense that it still cannot tell where is my, the end of my data right uh think of it this way this is what we just did declare a character right and now i regret putting in the number 20 because i need to draw 20 boxes here I just do dot dot dot. This is a of 19, right? This is a of zero, right? And the content right now, we, we, we want uh, shop the array. Uh, they're actually easier way than that. Actually, what we have right now, H, E, L, L, O, right? What C do to know that, hey, that's the end of my string is put in the value zero. value zero, uh, zero will be put at the end of your string. If you do printf, right? If you do printf, uh, percent s, which means I'm gonna print a string and then I put in the value a, right? This will result in hello. It would basically scan through scan through this array from the first elements to whatever elements that result in the value zero. So we go to edge, we would print out edge, then go scan to the next item, E. So we would print the lowercase E, then lowercase L, lowercase L, and then lowercase O, the next item, it reads zero. Uh, print out basically, okay, that's the, uh, that's the end of my string. Which means that if I want to store hello, right, which is five letters long, can I do it on uh, uh, another array, char B, which I declare as is a five letter long array? Uh, the answer is actually, yeah, you can kind of do that, but what will happen if I do it? If I do it and I say print F, then S, B. It would actually keep printing until whatever is scanned it result in the in, in zero. So it would keep going beyond that 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 last last items in my array. This is how memory works. We'll go into a little bit of that detail today. Uh, I'll explain what exactly is going on. But basically, when you deal with uh, a string, 
it will scan the character array until it finds zero. And this is actually part of it is the beauty of pointer, and it's also partially the annoyance of pointer. Uh, we kind of cover that. Uh, another thing that I want to cover before we go deeper into pointer is uh, a data struct, right? A data struct is uh, a collection of different elements of items that you can declare in C and use. Uh, this is how you declare it. It can say struct, the name of your struct, right? It, this, this can be any name, basically the, the name you want. And then you can say what goes inside this data struct. In this case, there'll be one integer and one, uh, one float, right? These basically create a structure called some name with an int and a float in them to refer to each, uh, each element. So if you want to access this integer, you can, do, uh, you can use this dot to access the element. The same goes for B. This would get the floating point element. Uh, some name dot A will get the integer element. You can also then do an array of structs, right? Uh, which basically would be used similar to an array, right? So you can do struct some name, the name, right? Uh, and then you can do array name, which is the struct, right? You want to get the first item of the first element in my array. So I can do array name uh, zero dot a. Uh, this is basically what happened. You have array. Right? So this is uh, arr underscore name 999, the last item. This is the first item, arr underscore name zero, right? Inside here, if you zoom it in, basically it would consist of A and B. This is integer, and this is a floating point. Right. And that's it. Basically, is is you can declare a struct that consists of different elements. Uh, if you look in 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 kind of like a programming language point of view, this is a collection. It's a collection of different data types. And you can access them. Uh, you can then declare uh, declare an array of this collection of data type. If you want to define define your new data type, for example, if I declare this struct, right, uh, that 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 use the same name, but every time every time I want to create an array, one thing I'm go I'm gonna go back to the previous slide, so hopefully it's not confusing to for you, but I want to tell you that I'm going back. If I want to declare an array of struct, right, you can use this struct and then some name. It's a lot of typing, right? Every time you need to refer to the struct that you created, you need to type in struct followed by the name of the struct that you say, right? If, I'm, if I want to be lazy, I want to declare that struct some name is a data type. This is what I can do. Uh, I would use the keyword type def, define a type, followed by the data type that you declare, which in this case is struct some name, and this is new name, right? So in this case, if I want to create an array of struct, I don't have to, I don't have to write in something like this. Thing like a full struct some name. These basically go into new name. That's a definition of my type. It's a new data type. And this is the same. This is the same as the array name followed by how many elements go into my array. Any questions before we go into point? All right, uh, so if you want to actually look at how C store data, and we discussed this earlier in when we talk about Linux, right, and C. 
basically every single piece of data, a var variable in the program, including the program itself, is copied from your hard drive, right? When you have the file that you're running, right? It's, it's a file. When you want to run it, these data get copied over to the DRAM, the main memory, for the processor to execute to run it. So to know where they are in the memory, memory is a big place. Think of it as memory is, say, Bangkok, right? If you want to run your program, you need to give them an address of both the data and the program. Otherwise, you get lost in Bangkok. You don't know where to go, and you you start reading random data from some other program. Uh, so to know where they are, you need an address. An address associated with with every single piece of data. Think of this as a, a home address of the data. In C, every single variable has its own address. In Python, every single variable you use also has its own address, but you don't have any control over that. In C, you have control over this. You can directly kind of like look at, hey, what's my address? Uh, you cannot do the same thing in Python. Uh, array, as I uh, used earlier as an example, is a form of basically an address. It's a range of address. Uh, uh, think of it as, let's say, in, in Bangkok, there's multiple, uh, uh, there, there are multiple uh, uh, different, like, uh, I don't know what's the correct word in English. I want to say village, but it's not village as the, the, the same meaning in English. But basically, it's this like uh, housing area, right? Yeah, neighborhood. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's like different neighborhood. And you probably don't want some random unknown people walk around in your neighborhood. That's not safe, right? It's the same thing in, in memory. Linux has its own neighborhood, its own address space, right? You don't want Chrome to be able to walk randomly and read what's in that Linux neighborhood. Because otherwise, some random taps on Chrome can crash your Linux. So this is the same thing. Array is a range of address. Uh, it's not as big as neighborhood. It's just collection of address uh, that has its own range, right? Uh, and, and in C, you can kind of create the data type that store the address. This is called a pointer. You can have now, you can have a data type like integer that store data, a floating point, a character, right? A struct that store data. On top of that, not just data, you can actually look at address. And when you can look at these address, you want to be able to store the address as well, right? So, so this is called a pointer. So let me kind of visualize this a little bit, right? So we have uh, we have. Let's say this is your DRAM. This, uh, the reason I paused, I think, is too small. So let me let me re redraw this. Right. So this is your memory. And let's say what you want to do is a single piece of program that want to do multiply up to metrics, right? Metrics, metrics A and metrics B. What is a metrics? It's just a bunch of data, right? It's a bunch of data ordered in a row and column, uh, and then you do the multiply. Why do I use this as an example? Every single machine learning application do metrics multiply. That's basically what they do. It's, it's a lot of these metrics multiply. Uh, if I want to do metrics multiply, right? What happened is both A and B has to be stored somewhere in my memory. This is DRAM. Right? Just copy over from the file, the hard drive. Right, because you know where is the data uh, you you copy over when you run the program uh, and then you have the processor 
Andrew, let me use a different color. I'm sorry. Wait, did I just delete everything? Okay, my bad. I just hit hit clear, so that get deleted. Let me redraw everything. So sorry. This is my memory. Sorry about uh uh that accident. I did not intend to delete everything. This is matrix A and matrix B. Basically, the first thing you need to do when you write a C program is you need to read both A and B. The, the reading process, one of the part is involved in, in you copying data from the disk to the memory. So A and B would be stored in here. Then you have the processor, right? What it does is processor is you go and execute like do something with the data. In this case, multiply followed by add, right? That's basically what metrics multiply is. You multiply each element. Once you got the result of the multiply, you add them together into the resulting metrics. So the processor basically is on the CPU, right? And this is essentially DRAM. It's not at the same place. The CPU is at one location on your motherboard, your computer. DRAM is on a different location. Memory is big, as I said. Think of it as here. This, this entire thing is Bangkok. A and B is one and in, in different neighborhoods. So what do I need to do for the process to tell where is A and where is B is I need to give them the address, right? Basically, I need to give them the address so that they can access the first, uh, first, sorry, uh, first elements of A and B. So this is the address. Where is my data? The data is a and B. So these are data, the actual thing that you want to compute on. So now can you see the importance of knowing where my data is? Because otherwise I can't do anything, right? In every single programming language, in every single programming language, they need to find a way for you as a programmer to access your data. They all use address. Some of them would expose the address for you so you can manipulate it. Some of them will not do that for you. Python will not do it for you because you then don't have to think about, okay, where, where, where the heck is A, where the heck is B? I just need to do the multiply. I don't care where it is, right? In C, you have that option to kind of like go around, walk the address, basically walk through the neighborhood and play around with it. And as I said, the benefit is this is if you know how to do this well, it's going to be really, really fast. Uh, the reason why these are fast, we'll cover them in the module, the last module when we talk about caching and virtual memory, basically how we make memory faster. Right now, just know that each piece of data will have an address. The address is used by the processor to access them. All right, so let's move on. Uh, I should have made another slide that a blank to show this. Basically, I said when you do in the A and assign value 10 to that, uh, you, you have A as a, a variable, right? And it stores the data value of 10. This is what happened when you say in A equals 10. Then, if you want to get the address of these integer, what you can type in in C when you program is use ampersand. You might have seen that in scanf, right? When you do scanf percent d and variable name, the reason why need you need to put the and percent there is scanf take the address. Scanf need the address of where is the data I want to write to. 
so that it knows, okay, write this new data into this address, right? So uh, when you need to actually deal with address, you use ampersand in front of the variable name. Uh, here is an example, right? Here's an example, of the earlier example, what we have is int a equal 10, right? And you have the main memory. DRAM. And let's say this is where A is. This is basically where A is, right? If I do ampersand A, and let's assume that this address is at location, I'm gonna use a hex number, uh, a hexadecimal. Uh, this, it basically, this address can be converted to decimal, it's the same thing, but hexadecimal is just make it shorter. So let's say it's at the location 0x, uh, A, A, B, B, it's, it's, it's a number. The number that specify the address, it's just where the data is, right? If I type in ampersand A, this is basically corresponding to 0x A A B B. If I want to print out A, the value is 10. The value of ampersand A or the address of A is 0x A A B B. 0x A A B B correspond to the location that store the value 10. Any questions about this? because we will then do the reverse. Okay, so basically right now we have a variable A, the address of variable A is zero X A A B B. This would be assigned by C and the runtime. Basically the OS and the language, like the, the, the compiler will kind of assign this value. Uh, the data inside this address is 10. The address is 0xaabb. If we want to use a pointer to do the same thing, this is what you can do. In star a equal 10, assuming that you have allocate, we'll talk about allocation in a bit. Assuming that you have this space to store a, then you can do in star a equals 10. Now a, it's not a data anymore, it's a pointer. It's a pointer that store an address. The address right now point to a data that has the value 10. Basically this address point to the value 10. Store A basically is the value of 10. A is the address that you are looking at right now, right? To get the variable address, you can do ampersand to get the value of the pointer or an address that I'm pointing at, I, uh, I can do star, right? And you can make a pointer point to other variables. Say right now I'm done with using these data 10 and I want to use A to point to a different piece of data. I would then reassign A to point to different things. You can also do an operation on a pointer. You can increment the address, right? So you can do A plus plus. That would get me the next elements of A. This probably might make you think about, okay, what's about the array? Array is basically a pointer. When you declare an array, you technically create a pointer. Then the pointer would first point to the first element. Uh, this is one example, right? Let's say you create an array of, of it with four elements, right? Um, basically, this is the same as, so this is your array of int with four elements, right? This is a pointer that point to the first elements, and you can do plus plus to go to the next element. Each entry takes exactly n bits based on the size of, in this case, integer, right? Because it's an array of integer. Let's say integer takes four bytes, then my pointer would be how much? There's this whole, this whole array, what's the size of this array? If I have uh, an integer, integer, let's assume integer right now is four bytes. 
and there are four elements, which means that my error is four multiplied by four, right? 16. Four elements, each element is four bytes. <clears throat> now your pointer point to this collection of data, 16 bytes long. Whenever you move from one element to the next element, you could increment from the first address to the next piece of data. If you want to access A of five, this is the same thing as you type in star in parentheses A plus five, right? Basically, it would go to the fifth element of my array. Actually, that's the sixth element because the, the first element starts at zero. So A of five would go to the sixth element, right? Skipping zero, one, two, three, four, and then go to the fifth, uh, the, 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 the A of five. You can also, uh, if you type in ampersand A5, right, this is similar to the pointer value, the address, the address of that six elements of A5. Uh, there's another concept called a noun pointer. How many of you heard about the word noun before? Yes, it in Java. Yeah, basically, it just means that there's no value, there's nothing. Uh, it's kind of almost like a, a void, right? There's nothing here. Uh, a pointer can take a value that doesn't point to anything. Think of it as you have a form that say, what's my address? And and, and I haven't filled it in yet. It, it, it's a noun pointer because there's no valid address specified yet. Right? Uh, in C, you can assign now to a pointer value to make sure that, hey, that pointer doesn't randomly point to someone address, right? Why is this good? Sometime, if you initially say you do in star A, right? Star A is a pointer. It might get assigned some random value. What it means is you probably don't want your program to access that random piece of data. Why? Think about it this way. Let's say I own a house. I have my own address. Someone initiate random pointer. It just happened that that pointer point to my home. I probably don't want some unknown person walking into my home and look at what's in my house. Right? That's not safe. The same things with program. You can assign now to a pointer value so that that's not Thing like that happen. And knowing the address, knowing the address is also can make things a little bit unsafe in a way that if I'm a thief, right, and I know where exactly my target is home is, I then can actively try to sneak into that address. This is a lot of how uh how virus work. Basically, if you want to create a computer virus. One of the process is kind of figure out the address of where the important data is located, right? Where does my operating system store some important data? Can I sneak in there and either look at it or modify it, right? So if you see a lot of virus code, uh, some of them will be written in low level language, even in assembly just because they want to take control of where the address they want to access. All right. So uh, each data type has its own size. Uh, it, it's not, it's not more, so it's not because you need to change everything important to now, but when you say initialize and an, an, a pointer, or uh, you know that this pointer is not pointing to anything. That I mean, I mean about the virus. The virus can the virus do do that? Does it change important stuff to? I mean, it doesn't have to. It just change to some other value, right? It it just need to change it to something else. That's that's good enough. It would crash some program, right? Let's say you do a certain calculation and someone randomly change one of the variable. What would happen? I would get errors, and that's good enough. Um. I mean, let, let me give an example of what can crash a computer, right? 
Uh, let's say you run a computer. How many of you run into the blue screen before? Just suddenly screen turned blue. You see some error code flash for like half a second in the reboot. Okay, not anymore. Okay, that's great. Uh, actually, that's a great thing about about computer nowadays. They have a lot of. There's actually a lot of uh new actually computer architecture techniques to prevent those blue screen right but one of the really common thing in there is uh there's a bit flip basically in your memory right each memory is stored is storing it is basically what it what's in there is data for every single program running on your computer right so uh what happened when there's a blue screen is some of those data get flipped from zero to one. And then the OS detects that, hey, my own data get flipped. It might be because someone else trying to hack to my machine, or it can actually naturally happen. When I said naturally happen, go back, let's go back to physics. We store electrons in DRAM, in, in, in the capacitor, right? Basically, uh, that's a capacitor in every, uh, in, in, in the memory that store electron that represent either value zero or one. Capacitor, as we might have known it, or if you don't know it, the fact is capacitor leaks electron over time. So, let's say, one millisecond has passed, and by accident, the electron leaks out, bit flip, right? Bit flip, just one single bit. Yep, OS detect that. OS thinks that, okay, someone might be trying to hack to my machine. I'm going to reboot myself so that I restore the old safe state. That's it, right? That, that's how, uh, that's how knowing an address if if you know someone's like an, an os address that owned by a kernel what you can do is randomly flip the data that's it you, that's all you need to do when i said you might want to assign things a pointer to now is uh basically because you don't want to randomly crash your machine because you are pointing at some 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 important data and you accidentally modify it it means that you run a program, the program accidentally flips some important data, and now you get a reboot. Yep. Uh, basically, yeah, uh, you, your program it becomes buggy. But yeah, that's actually a cause, one possible cause of those blue screen. Uh, all right, let's come back to our material, right? Uh, and, and if I'm going too much, getting too much sidetrack on, on like some, some related issues and you you feel like hey let's let's come back to to the material let me know uh somehow i just want to tell you like what's going on in, in a computer uh in c you want to you one thing you can do is it detect how big is my data you can do size of size of int would print the size of an integer is it two bytes is it four bytes is it eight bytes this size actually vary across different machine it kind of depends on a few things the language as well as the architecture size of float will print the size of a floating point number let's say a is an array if you put in size of a it would print how big is my array The process of using store and ampersand is called referencing and dereferencing. When you do store and the variable name, this is called dereferencing. You dereference an address into a value. Ampersand means I'm going to reference. You create a reference or an address that points to the data, right? So what does this do? Store and A. This 
the same as this, basically. Start in MD referencing, and then I'm referencing it again. So I got A. That's the result, all right? Because it cancel each one of them out. Uh, things that you want to be careful about playing around with pointers as, as follows, right? Basically, uh, first you need to make sure you declare a pointer. Basically, you do in star something that that's a given. Then you need to make sure the pointer points to some valid location. It can be a now location, which means I'm not pointing to anything right now. Uh, it can be assigned to a variable that you declare earlier, or it can be point to some allocated space which you discuss in the bit. Otherwise, accessing the pointer becomes illegal. You break the law, right? Uh, as I said, think of it as you are trespassing some other person's address, and that's not good, that's illegal. When you need to access a file to read or to write to a file, this type of pointer is called a file pointer, and you can use this syntax. File, uh, this is a data type. It has a lot of process going into this, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. That's why I just put in uh, what do you do from here. Basically, you can do file and then the pointer name that want to point to a file on your hard drive. Then you put in the path. This can be something like slash home, slash, uh, say, let's chat a dot input, right? This can be a path to the files that I want to use as an input. The mode is R mean read, W mean write. And when you are done with the files, don't forget to close the file. This is probably the one of the most common mistakes that people do, including myself. I still do it nowadays. By accident, it's not good, but basically you need to then, once you finish using the files, you do F close and the file pointer, right? So right now, this is, let's, let's name it FP, just to make sure everything is consistent, file pointer. Uh, so this example, you can convert to file star fp, right? And then fp equal f open pad. And then read, for example, and then f close. Let's say once I'm done with it, f close fp. That would close the files. And if you want to see more, I actually uh, recommend you to take a look at this. Uh, it's, it's, this file, we call it Scream, and we'll go in, in a little bit to, into more detail what, what, what does it mean for a, a, something to be a stream. Uh, if there's an error, when you open a file, for example, there's no file. You put in a path, the path doesn't exist, you get now. So FP, the file pointer, would get a now, now, now value. You can read from the file uh, by using f scanf. Basically, we do a scanf on a file. So notice that's the letter f here. You put in the file pointer. For example, in the earlier example, the file pointer name is fp. So you replace that with fp. And this means that I'm going to read one integer from the file. I put that value in A. This is the same, uh, the same concept also applies for the get function. So you can do get C, get character, and get S, uh, get string. This would get this character and string from your keyboard. If you want to get it from a file, you do F get C and F get S. Uh, writing to a file, so instead of print F, then you use F print F. File printf, the same format as the 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 scanf. Uh, there is one more thing, right? End of files. 
this tells when you keep reading the files at some point you need to be able to figure out hey that's the end of my file my my file right it's a text file and that's the last line of the text so once you keep doing scanf 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 when it reached the last point of your file the return value would raise this end of files flag basically it would tell hey that's the end of my file don't keep reading that's it i, I can't read anymore that's the end of this file you can use this function f e o f file end of file and put in the file pointer to check if you reach the end of file right so one common thing that you can do is you can have the while loop while not end of file right my file pointer and then basically i want to keep reading every single line so one thing i can do is to do uh no scan uh, scan f right f scan f P, press an S, and then string, right? My string. And that's it. It will keep reading the file over and over and over, put that line into a string. And every time you go through the loop, it would replace that the string with the, 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 the next uh, line. And it would keep doing until the end of the file. So you can use this the FEOF inside the loop to make sure that you, you would reach the end of files and when you reach it to exit the loop. And we talk about stream. Uh, basically, this handle inputs and output. Like, so if you go back all the way to the lecture where I say, what's a computer? The computer takes in an input, produce an output, right? This process of sending information from the input to your computer and sending the information from your computer to the output is done through stream IO. Uh, basically, this allow you to access things like a file, a keyboard input, printer, terminal, uh, all those things, right, and, and more. Uh, some of the sample of streams are file pointer, it would interact with the stream, print out, Print to the standard input, that's also a stream because, I mean, standard output your, your monitor, you have to do it through stream IO. Uh, print to a file or as printf even is print to a stream, which would then can be flushed to your monitor output, a file or even a network location, right? So, so this is what does it mean to, to be a stream IO. Uh, we, you would then kind of touch this topic again if you go into the OS lecture. Basically, now it has to deal with multiple input outputs. Uh, how do you take command from the keyboard? How to deal with it from the C program? Uh, okay, so let's take a quick five minute break before we move on to the second part of the lecture. Uh, any, any have anyone have a question or anything? Uh, let's ask it now to flush it out uh, before we move to the next topic. Yeah. So if you don't do mean the percent percent D, yeah, right? D. You don't have to, if you, if you know what exactly you want to print, for example, I just want to print hello world, right? You just type in printf quotation, hello world. You don't have to have percent D or anything. The percent is when you need to print a variable. Oh, like a, if a if, quotation, I cannot just print A, right? Yeah, you cannot just say print A. You need to do printf percent D, uh, the, the comma A, right? So let's say you have a equals 10, right? What you need to do is to print, do printf. And basically tell the printf function that, hey, I want to print something and that thing is a decimal value. Take the decimal value from this data, data from the variable a. And that's it. 
uh, then if a is an array, then you can do a print of percent d a zero. That this also would be an equivalent version of that. Uh, one convenience of C is you can't just randomly print a list. You can't randomly print an array. Uh, you need to kind of go through each element using a loop. Uh, uh, in C, string can only represent by character RD, right? Yeah, so that's no, that's no that's not such thing type. as a string object, right? because there's no object. Look, the a library includes string, right? I, I see it before, it's string library. Okay, so this is kind of like the evolution of C the textbook version of C, which is what we teach is, is called NCC, which is like, oh, like how long ago? About 20 years ago version, like when, when they invent the language and then when it gets like updated to this is a canonical uh, C language, uh, it doesn't really have the concept of string. Then when you keep updating the GCC compiler, the DVC code, uh, and then now it kind of blend with C++, right? So C++ has a string. It's a part of the standard object. In C, a string is basically an array of character. It's the same thing. Basically, it's a, it's a pointer of a character, basically a pointer to a character. So let's say do, you do char or a that is essentially a string. It's a it's a, an is an array of character. Sorry, once uh while while uh we're chirping, wife is definitely nice. Let me sorry, uh let me kind of mute you. <laughs> otherwise otherwise we, we can't we will be too noisy uh, here. Uh okay, so let's move on. Uh let's talk about memory allocation. Uh what is memory allocation? Basically, as I said, everything is a data. Program is a data, data is a data that has to have the actual address, right? To have an address, it means that you have to have a land. Right? You can't build a house if you don't own a land. Think of it this way, it's illegal to build a house on someone else's land. So if you want to store a data, right? You first need to allocate, you need to first buy a land in the main memory that, hey, I want to put data there. This is called memory allocation. So the program has to allocate memory for variables. It has to allocate a block of memory for arrays, right? And with pointers, you can do this manually. If you do in I, that is done automatically. This is done without you having to do it manually. But if you do in store I, then you need to manually allocate an area, a land for the address I. Right. So how do you allocate this memory? There's a this that's two two different process. The first process is called static memory allocation. This is done when you call and initialize an area. For example, you do int I ten. Basically, these create right. Array i of size 10. This is, the allocation is done statically. By default, you don't have to do anything. You can use an array. Dynamic memory allocation is done through a command called malloc. The malloc takes in the input. The input is essentially the size. If I want to build a house, 
the first thing I need to do when I want to buy a land is how big do I want, right? And in computer, there's no limit on how much land do you want for your program. It just happened that if you use too much land, then your friends cannot allocate more land. Basically, you need to kind of balance out how big you want for each data. Uh, this is what you can do in store A, A is a, a pointer, right? So let's say now you want to create an array for A of size 10. <clears throat> Basically, you can do malloc, A equal malloc, right? 10 multiplied by size of int. These would create an array of int that has 10 uh slot each one of them would hold one integer this would be a a point a points to the first location so <clears throat> this this is the return value of malloc Basically, malloc gave you an address. The address is then assigned to A. Basically, this command basically go and find a free location in DRAM. Give that to A. You send some agent to, sign, to find, okay, where is the free land? Where's the free land? If there's a land that match the size that you want, you then go back and tell A that, hey, that's where your land is. You can put data there. That's it, right? It's as simple as that. Uh, yeah, that that's exactly the same example. Uh, so here is like a, a drawing example. So what we just did was do this, right? In store A, and then I do A equal malloc. Size of int multiplied by 10. So let's assume that int is four bytes. What's what's the what is size of int multiplied by 10? Let's assume int is four bytes. This is basically four multiplied by 10 right 40 bytes yep basically what you put in here is <clears throat> the same thing as a equal malloc 40. it's the same thing basically size of return a, a, a number that represents the size multiply 10 is also a number so you get a number basically inside the memory Some of these are allocated for like Linux. Some of them are allocated for another program that you're running, right? Chrome, uh, YouTube, or whatever. And then what this process would do is to go seek these location and say, okay, where is the empty 40 byte area that I can use for A? And let's assume it's right here. Let's assume it's right here. And this address is 0 x uh, f f 0 0. This is a number. Basically, that's the address of where the empty land is. <clears throat> it would come back, return it to A. Now, A would take the value 0 x f f 0 0, right? And then A can use the area around zero f starting from ff00 and then the next basically the next 40 bytes of ff00 would belong to a <clears throat> so let's actually this process is annoying right for you for sure uh why do I have to keep doing calling this malloc? That's one good use case here. Static memory allocation. Let's say do I 
in I10, right? And somehow I then need to use 15 elements. What do I do? I cannot say, hey, I replace all these things and somehow expand yourself to 15 elements. You cannot do that. In C, you need to use dynamic memory allocation of malloc to do it. So you can kind of increase the size of your array. Basically, what you have to do is first create a temporary pointer to point to that new area. Like, do you want to expand your house? Your land is limited. You can't expand anymore. What you need to do is buy a new land. And then you then copy the old house over there and then expand it in a new land because now you can do it. So then you allocate a bigger site size range, right, for the same pointer, you copy the old content, you deallocate the old pointer, and now you have a new array with more land. And when you do deallocation, which I'll go over in detail in a little bit, deallocation is the process of marking this old land as not used anymore. Someone else can come in and claim it. Right? So here's what happened when you do deallocation. Uh, this is done through a function called free. What happened is, let's say you no longer need to use this array, this area of, of, of the address that you created anymore. You don't need to use the land, right? So you can free them by calling free address or free pointer name, because pointer names is an address. Basically, you free up the address. Uh, this would allow the OS to know that, okay, that land is now free. I can give it to someone else. This is how the OS can handle the case where DRAM is limited, right? So if you buy a computer these days, you, how, how big is your memory? Usually it's like eight gigabyte, 16 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte, right? It's limited. You can't fit one terabyte of data into your DRAM. It's just impossible. Well, one terabyte is almost always impossible, except if you have this new uh, like new device called Intel Optane. It just came out that have terabytes of memory. But anyway, uh, then you need to keep freeing your, your allocated memory. So don't forget to free don't forget to free if you don't need to use the data anymore. That's another common error. Uh, so let me list some common errors that I have tell you for now. Things like if A equal B. Things like you open a file and you forget to close it. Or you allocate a memory and you forgot to free when you're done. You need to do this to avoid this thing called memory leak. What memory leak happens, what it does is the program would keep consuming more and more and more and more memory because you never free them. And at some point you run out of memory and then your computer would be super slow. <clears throat> you might have run into the case where you open 50 different Chrome tabs, right? And then your computer comes to almost a halt because you don't have memory anymore. And, and the result of this is then uh, basically your machine, your computer will be super slow. One more concept before we kind of finish uh, to the lecture is this concept of heap versus stack, right? A pointer point to both a heap or a stack, basically both of them are inside DRAM. And there are like some minor uh, uh, difference. A stack refer to an area that is allocated for the program before you, be, right before you run it. This is done through the compiler. I, when I declare, if I, if I write a code like this, right, int a of 10, I know right away that, hey, a would have size 10. 
So these would go into the stack. Things like variables, uh, the uh, a static array that you declare a ten. These things would go into the stack. Any static memory allocation basically go into the stack. The benefit of these is compiler can do tricks, which I'm not going definitely not cover in this class, but they can do tricks to make your program faster because it knows exactly what's the size of your data. Heap is where you can do dynamic memory allocation, which you call malloc. Like those malloc would use the area from the heap to grow your arrays, grow your data. So what are the use cases of pointers, right? It's annoying, right? It is basically, it can be really annoying, but the first use case is first, obviously dynamic memory allocation. You can keep increasing the size of your array and that's convenient, right? And then you can implement many data structure that we will go into detail in the, in the future lectures. Basically these, you can, it allows you to build things like linked list, uh, a tree, and based on your poll, I would try to cover what are these in the lecture as well, just to make sure everyone is on the same page. And then I'll tell you how I can use pointer to build this data structure. You can pass data in and out of a function. You can pass an array into the function using a pointer, and then you can return a pointer, right? So in C, right, when you run return, I, I is one piece of data and that's a limit. Basically you can only return one thing. If you want to return more than one thing, what do you do? Return a pointer. Why is that okay? Because instead of one single item, you just return an address. That's the beginning of whatever I want to return. And then you write a program to handle that. Uh, you can actually also, because function is data, Function is the data. So you can use a pointer to point to a function. We will kind of cover some use case of that in detail. It is a little bit more advanced. Uh, uh, and I don't want to flood you with too much information today. So function pointers and things like that will cover in the future lecture and also the assignment. So more thing to consider. Void is a data type. It basically means nothing. And as I said, function has a can have a void as a return type. Uh, this is discussed on Monday. It means basically the function doesn't return anything. And, uh, and a pointer also can have a void type. Basically, it means that I don't want to declare what's the data type of this pointer. I just want to store an address. Right? It doesn't have a particular type yet. I would change that later in the future. You can use the process called casting to change a data type of a pointer or a data type of your data from one type to another. Uh, similar to variables, you can cast a pointer type in store in parentheses. Uh, so voice star, yeah. So you can do so if okay. I assume that's a question about the how to create a void pointer, right? So you can do void star a. Basically, this create a pointer called a is a pointer, but I'm not going to assign a data type to it yet. I would do it later. Uh, so you can cast similar to variable, the normal data. You can do int star, would mean that I'm going to cast this pointer into a pointer for integer. Float star means that it's a point of float and etc. Why is this matter? In C, a character is one byte. An integer is four bytes, right? So each type of data is has different size. So let's say I have created in star A, and now I allocate four entries for that. One, 
two, three, four, right? And this is A. If I do char star, whoop. if I do this, it means that, well, B also points here. What will happen if I run A plus plus? Where do I point now? If I do A plus plus, I would then point to the second element, right? This is A plus one. If I do B plus plus, instead of going to the next item of my integer, it would actually move here. This is B plus one. This is the second byte in uh, in a of zero because now b is a data type char character character is one byte so i when i increment b by one i move one byte instead of four bytes right so i don't go to the next integer element i just go to the second byte of a and that's the difference Okay, any questions about this? Because I feel like that might confuse you. All right, if you have any follow-up questions, type it in. I will reply or email me when you run into these in either from the exercise or from uh, the, the assignment. Another thing is a constant. Right. You can type in C-O-N-S-T. When you type in C-O-N-S-T, it would tell C that whatever you declare here will not be changed. For example, if you const in star A, it means that A can point to many, many things. But but when we use the, the value A, when we use this value, we cannot really modify the data. Think of it as a read-only pointer. You can modify it. It's a constant. Uh, this is different from the earlier case. The reason why they are different is where where I put in this keyword const. Right? This get interpreted as I have a constant integer by star a this is i have integer pointer that is a constant that is called a so a is a constant in this case integer the data is a constant so this is data this is a pointer so in this case you can modify the content of a in this by this case i mean the, the 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 second case here you can then modify the content of a you cannot change the pointer value right so take home exercise think about what what, what about cons in store cons say uh if you want to double check the answer just email me or, or some or, or just ask me the next lecture uh, i want you to think about this a little bit because this is one of the other uh, confusing slides and i feel like unless you actually try to run it on a, an actual code by yourself there's no way you can there's just no no good way to to actually uh, use it except like running on literally on your laptop on your program when you code it as an example. Uh, I am also on Discord, so you can ping me. <laughs> so uh, you can also use con as a function declaration. Uh, basically, it means that the function is a, a, a constant function. You can't really reassign the function. This has to do with function pointer. Uh, last thing, I think, I think it's the last thing, basically, 
how many of you you use a debugger when you write code in python uh, on the ide to go through each line of code and see what what get changed uh, what's the value right now before i finish the, the running the program barely okay uh good at, at least you 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 know you know about it right okay you you uh, putting a bunch of prints are okay i did that as well uh yeah so th that's another way to debug your code in c there's a convenient tool that you can use this is called gdb it allows you to debug both c and c plus when you want to use GDB, the only thing you need to do is when you compile, you just add dash G to the GCC command. Uh, then you can actually type in in the command line in terminal that GDB executable, the, the, the file that you want to debug, like the binary you want to debug. Then you can do multiple things and, and uh, what I encourage you to do, because it, it actually requires uh, quite a bit of uh, command to, to, to go through your code. You, so, so I would say Google GDB sheet sheet. If you do assignment two and you want to debug, uh, then I definitely recommend to use GDB. Uh, it can set a breakpoint. The breakpoint basically means that once you hit this line, pause, pause the execution because I want this I want to print out what's the value of this variable, what's the value in this array, where is everything. So you can set the breakpoint with the line number or a function uh, or even a function name, right? You can run a program in GDB. When you, when you first use GDB, once you set the breakpoint, you just type in run, R-U-N. This would run the, the 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 code up to the breakpoint and then it pass. After you hit the breakpoint and print all the value, which means that you can type in print variable names, address, what what's the value in this address and, and all these things, and you finish debugging there, you can type in continue. It would continue to run to the next breakpoint. Can use the command step instead of continue to the next breakpoint. You step one line, 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 line. Right. Uh, so, so this can be useful. Uh, it would be almost similar to a debugger tools in Java. The only difference, and it's actually major, is this is not this are command you need to type in in the terminal. So, so it will be a little bit more, uh, I would say, annoying. Java in the IDE is, is like you see the interface. You visually see the interface. Over here, you need to kind of type in, okay, what's the value of this variable? What's the value of blah, blah, blah. You can watch what get changed and things like that as well. It's actually super powerful if you, if you got used to how to use GDB. And for today's lecture, uh, I would like to give multiple references uh, where you can use to, to kind of like go through them when you are trying to do assignment two. Uh, these are C manual for, uh, and also C standard libraries. Uh, the standard library is one of the class material from uh, Stanford for the introduction to system. Basically it's a similar class style as what we're doing right now. The C manual is a more like a complete, here are the syntax of all the things that, that is available in C. All right, so right now I'm gonna switch over to uh, the Q&A. Uh, so I'm gonna unplug my laptop. I'm gonna switch back to my desktop like usual. So give me like three or four minutes to kind of reset up everything. And that's it for today's lecture. There is no in-class exercise because as I mentioned, today is a makeup class. Not everyone can make it to the to the lecture. So I'm going to kind of wrap up everything in the Monday lecture. Uh, if you need to head to another different lecture, uh, please feel free to do so at the end of class.
chat if you have any questions uh please feel free to ask in the meantime i'll go through the question that that you, you, you or your friend email to you over the overnight yesterday and today, I would kind of gradually reply them. If you have additional questions, type in the chat, I'll go through them. All right. So let me save this uh, annotated slides. Ajahn, Ajahn, Tham, Con, In, Star, Con, A, Chai, Webna, Ajahn. เออคอนสมันเป็นคือคอนสแตนพอยเตอร์ของอีทีเจอร์เอป่ะอาจารย์ yes you mean this one right the the last one ครับครับ yeah it it basically there are two cons right so so Okay, let me let me just give the answer. Oops. Pen. So there are two cons. Right? One of the cons pair to a pointer. Another con pair to an integer. This means basically I can change the value of pointer and I cannot change the value of integer. I can read only. Basically, I can read. I can't change anything. อาจารย์แล้วผมเคยเห็นบางทีเห็นคนใช้อินทิเจอร์อยู่ก่อนคอนนันนี้เปิดกันไหมอาจารย์อินคอนสแตนกับคอนสแตนอินเอ่อ that's different basically it pair it would the cons would pair with what comes next right so in the first case when you when when we do here in the first case uh here you see cons int right that means that uh I I can't modify the int the data basically then here i can't modify the pointer but i can modify a and a is a pointer i can't modify the value of a pointer here i can't really modify anything it's read only Cons in and in cons. The in cons, you need to see what follow after that. Uh, basically, it would make that variable constant. You can't change it. 